We are back on Morning Line. It's our final segment this morning talking uh, bail reform. Uh, Mark Woodside's with us with Melton Bond and Company. Clearly a certain perspective on that where you're, you're very concerned about this industry. Um, in California, they're, they're saying some 3,000 people may be out of work now that they've uh, signed legislation to basically get rid of cash bonds there, which is, you know, very... We're not there in Tennessee at this point, but there's reform coming. How many people do uh, you think work in the bond industry in Tennessee? In Tennessee, I, I really don't know. In Nashville alone, I would say, it, because Nashville yeah, it's a big is, city. Yeah. is where the reform is really hitting heavy right now. Yeah. If they were to do away with us in just Davidson County, it would probably put... 120 people out of work immediately. 120. And to, to work, uh, like Melton bonding then, is, you have to be licensed per county? I mean, yes. you, you can't, so how many different counties does your company? Just uh, Davidson County. Davidson County is it? Yes. And uh, so if someone wants, say they're in Pickett County, they, they just have to find a bond agent A different in company, yes. In bond, okay. Um, and again, so is this basically happening just in Davidson? Well, we've seen some of the same stuff. I wasn't familiar whether in the Shelby County, Memphis, some of the larger city areas. The larger cities, yes. And at the root of this, again, if you talk to the sheriff, it's, it's the idea of incarcerating folks just because they can't afford it for lesser crimes and overcrowding and the money and the expense for that. Why not reform it so they don't all just have to depend on a bond to get out? That seems reasonable to me. And, and I agree. Uh, like I've said before, we believe that pretrial has a place. Mm -hmm. We believe that we have a place. Mm -hmm. There's a, a matter of reaching that happy medium. Uh, first time, nonviolent, non-drug related offenders. We don't have a problem with that. Those people deserve a chance. Mm -hmm. So in that case, you would suggest maybe reform to the point where there doesn't have to be a bond on that. Correct. They, on Correct. those things can be either locked up if for one reason or another they think they're a flight risk or allowed out. Yes. But the decision-making process has to be done within, what, a 24-hour period after they've been arrested? Pretty it, quick. It's typically done within just a few hours. A few hours. And they're not always arrested during you know, daylight time and no. office hours. So how would you, man how are they managing that now with the uh, pre-trial? How quickly Again, are they? Again, from what, I got, what I've been told, they, they have a, a list of charges that are excluded from being interviewed. Mm -hmm. They don't follow that list, by the way. Okay. Uh, if they do meet the criteria, the pre-trial people gather data from the algorithm yeah. And the person's released one o'clock in the morning, two o'clock in the morning. A, a judge is not involved, other than the magistrate or the commissioner, signing the order mm -hmm. of release. Yeah. Uh, you know, we have have questioned why not have the review done the following day, where maybe a little bit more information can be obtained. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's. What you mean where they'd have to hold them until the following day for the and review? If, yes. If a person truly was uh, unable to post bond, mm -hmm. talk to them tomorrow morning, you know, and try to get that figured out and, and try to get it fixed. But in the interim, people that could afford to make bond would make bond. I see. Okay. Let's go. Uh, I think Raymond may have a uh, follow-up question. Uh, go, ahead, go ahead, Raymond. Did you have a follow-up question? Yeah, I do. Okay. I want, I want why that it's public safety that I'm worried about the collateral damage more than anything. And then another thing, you got uh, people that uh, are in jail that um, the public officials know more about where to let them out or not. And if there's money in it for profit, why we even got a private businesses involved in public business? And to use the police, uh, collect the money that the bondsmen are making and let the public pay that to the police hmm. to do the work that the uh, people, bounty hunters, are hunting them down and have those police uh, verified that they are honest and reliable and uh, the public can trust in it. Well, that's in, meaning like, it's the, I guess he's saying let's have law enforcement take over the role of what the bond companies do, which, by the way, listen, the police are there to arrest, and after the fact, it's bonding, it's judicial. I, I can tell you this, law enforcement's going to tell them they have enough on their plate already beyond they that. They do. Yeah, I mean, he, that, that's something that couldn't go, but he is right about this. I was trying to think while he was talking about 
When it comes to a bond for someone, my primary concern, if you're going to let them out, is simple. It's just one thing. Are they a danger to society while they're out waiting? I don't care if they run. I don't care anything. I want to know, are they a danger to society if they get out? Well, you know, Nick, uh, an example of that, just about a week ago, they uh, arrested a man. He was currently on pretrial for his second offense DUI. Okay. He was released June 6th. The other day, driving down Jefferson Street, went up on the sidewalk, ran over a pedestrian, left the scene. <clears throat> that person with the second offense DUI, not his first mistake, his second mistake, was obviously a danger. Right. Now, he went out there and ran over that man. That's true. Now, he got out on pre-trial, but that's not yeah. to say if they didn't have pre-trial, he would have gotten a bond. I mean, I they would have posted that. Now, we don't know whether or not you would have posted it for him, but he would have had... Now, maybe he wouldn't have been able to afford it, and he would be stuck behind bars, right? Yes. Okay, I'm just saying... Good point. Okay, he gets out on pre-trial, so they, they made a poor call on him as being a threat. Maybe there should have been a bond, but he's still... There are still folks who have posted bond that get out and do the same crazy, crazy stuff, right? Of course, of course, of course. Typically, on a second offense DUI, he would have had bond conditions, like an interlock or something oh, like that. okay. And when a person violates their bond condition, yeah. it's charged to, to us, we go out, we pick him up, we take him back and put him back in jail for a violation of the bond condition. Right. I'm not saying that we could have prevented this terrible accident, mm -hmm. but the potential was there. I see what you're saying. Pre-trial yeah, does not go out and... and pick up or bring anyone in. They open the door, send them on their way, and they're done with it. Okay. What's so crazy to me, too, about just the bonding, is there's no guidelines. You told me there's not a bonding board. It's not really all that regulated. There are the laws in place, I guess, that, yes. that are being reformed. But beyond that, not regulated. I, I've done stories before where there have been folks, in my opinion, who are accused of some really pretty bad crimes that were given to me incredibly low bonds. And on the other hand, I've seen cases where there's some people I thought, why is he even in jail with some crazy high bond? There's no consistency to it. And, and again, that's, I guess, be not, it's not your fault. That's because the magistrates and the judges don't really have a real clear criteria where it says, okay, um, ag assault, that's automatically $15,000 bond. It, well, that would be like a bond schedule, and yeah. they've been determined to be unconstitutional because they don't evaluate the factors. Other factors involved. Is that involved. right? Is that how it is? So it's unconstitutional to have a bond schedule. A bond schedule. But, and the other factors would be what? Like, I mean, aside Ties from just the, the crime itself. Ties right? to the community. Ties to the community. Likelihood of return to court. Likelihood of conviction. Job. Uh, right. Friends, no, family, all, yeah. connections. Yeah, you're right. And that's so why this is, uh, it's you so have, to have much a human bigger. component in there. Yeah. yeah, it's so much bigger than uh, the money. Everybody points to the money. Mm -hmm. the, the financial aspect of bond in regard to those factors is not even a factor unto its own. It's a subsect mm -hmm. of a factor. Yeah. We, we have lost focus, if you will. Okay. Well, and we understand. All right. So, and uh, folks who see you sitting on here with me know, and, and you make good arguments, but at the same time, you're also fighting for what is part of your livelihood. Sure. Okay. Sure. And so that's part of it. And so you have to separate, okay, is, is point taken just because he wants to continue to be able to make money doing this, or is, is he genuinely thinking too about what's best for society? And I mean, I'll be the first person to be honest. Mm -hmm. I, I am concerned from a financial aspect. Mm -hmm. uh, again, I've done this 30 years. Yeah. I don't want to go find a new job. I, I just understand it's hard that. to and start over at 50 years old. I understand. I understand. But on the, the second part of that, you know, I'm worried about my wife, my daughter, my grandson, mm -hmm. and what Nashville is going to become if things are not reeled in. Okay. You know, again, I mean, I would point to Alaska. They passed reform to do the same thing. Yeah. Within two years, the governor who strongly supported it is backing off. He said it does not work. Because too many are getting out there. It's, it's, ca it's, it's making Alaska less safe. Mm -hmm. Same thing in New Mexico. Uh, the right. National Judicial College yep. took a, a, a poll of 800 judges. 69% said that bail reform does not work. Keep money, m monetary bail in place. Let's take Ben real quick. Ben, good morning. Hi, Ben. Hey, how are y'all? Good. Go ahead. Good. What's your point? Um, I was just wondering, what's the purpose of a bail? Uh, if they're going to learn 
to not do something to have like a harsher judgment. Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess it's the big picture thing. You have to remember, every, just remind folks, when you're posting bond, and I hear where you're coming from, Ben, and this is where the general public, you know, it's not always real clear to them. Sure. But everyone you're posting a bond for, or anyone who gets a bond, is innocent. They have not been proven guilty yet. Correct. That what I mean by that is we don't know. They're innocent in the eyes of the law because they are charged at this point. And so you can imagine if you really didn't do the crime and you're charged and you're locked up, you would want to have the ability to post a bond to get out sure. because being locked up when you really didn't do it and hey, it may go to trial and you'll be found innocent and you'll have spent six months behind bars for something you didn't do. At least if you had bond, you could have been out, correct? Correct. All right, so that, that's what it is. I mean, he's like, why? So the, is, is that what the purpose is for a bond? Yes. Yes. And you're innocent guarantee. until proven guilty. Exactly. And so you have a right to be out of behind bars, though there are some crimes that are so great and so serious. And the other factors come into play that um, either you're not allowed to have bond in very extreme cases or it's so high they know you can't make it. Sure. Yeah. Sure. I've actually seen cases, you probably have, where it wasn't first degree murder for the death penalty, which you don't get bond, but it was one that was so high and the guy found a way to make it and the DA ran back to the court and the judge doubled the bond. Sure. So he couldn't do it. They just kept raising it until they said, now it's to a point where he can't get out. We know we legally have to give it to you, but we also legally can keep raising it on you if we want. Sure. It's crazy, isn't it? It is. The way it works. Um, all right, so nothing, you think right now, I mean, the tide is going against you as it stands. Yes. But uh, the reason you're coming on shows like this and the such is to try to educate the public and get it out. That, and, and you know, I don't, I, I don't believe that Sheriff Hall is so unreasonable that he's not willing to sit down and try to reach a happy medium. Well, maybe, listen, we got to wrap it. Maybe we'll get the two of you on. And we'll I'd talk. love that. We'll see if he's willing to, and we'll go that route, because uh, a lot more to cover on this. Sir, thank you for coming on. Thank you for it's having interesting, me. Interesting conversation. We'll be back. Wrap it up right after this. Full of 